Hello world, today we're going to query price data from a Postgres database using SQLchemy. We'll use the database we created in the last video for future crypto stocks, forex, and futures algo trading purposes. If you haven't watched that video, I'll put a card up here and a link to this database series in the description below. This should be a quick one, so let's get right to it and create some code. We'll start by grabbing our imports. We're going to need four of them. We're going to grab date time to manipulate our dates, pandas to manipulate data frames and also query our database. We're going to get our models that we created in the previous video. And for those of you that are new here, we're creating a database to be able to trade stocks, crypto, forex, and futures. We're starting with the symbol table, which is essentially the parent table, and then the minute bar table, which is a child table with uh, OHLCV, or open high, low, close volume data at uh, minute bar resolution or minute resolution. And then we don't want to have to create connection code every time that we want to connect to our database. So we'll just get the PSQL code from two videos ago. And if you're not using Postgres, you could use any database that you really want uh, because SQLchemy is essentially database agnostic, you know, once you've set it up properly. So let's grab those imports. We import date time as DT import pandas as pd from models import our two tables symbol and minute bar and then from psql import db and session now with our imports out of the way uh, let's think about what we need to do we need to create two functions one to get our symbol data and the other to get our minute bar data we'll start off with symbol it's the easier one they're both easy but this is very easy. Get symbols. Perfect. And I will, as always, upload this to GitHub so you can have a copy of this notebook and work along with me. We'll create a function and we'll just, for now, we'll say market equals none because we're going to support markets in the future, but we won't actually add that code right now. We're just going to get the symbols that are currently in the, the symbol um, database. So we'll do query equals session we're using the sqlchemy session we're querying that session we're passing it the symbol model and then we'll grab the statement from there so that'll just output essentially an sql statement and then we can use pandas to read that uh, statement and grab the data so we'll do symbol symbols equals pd.read sql pass it the query we pass it the database and then we'll say we want the index column the id and then we need to return those symbols those symbols okay i'm going to enter and let's see if that worked hopefully i didn't make any mistakes get symbols and of course get symbols is not defined do i not hit enter here oh that's why symbols There we go. And you can see that we have our 311 uh, crypto tickers now available to us. So with that out of the way, let's get our minute bar. We'll do three get minute bars. Okay, let's think about what we want to do here, right? So we don't want to just blanket get all of our minute bars. We want to be able to pass it or pass this function uh, some tickers, and we also want to be able to pass it start and an end date, right? Because sometimes we don't want all of the minute bars because if you have a really large list of tickers, all those minute bars will take a really long time or depending upon how much memory you have, it could actually crash your system. So we want to make sure that we can pass our function, the tickers we want and the start and end date. If for some reason we don't give it a start and end date, we'll just say, let's get the most recent year. Those sound like good defaults. So we'll type in create a new function, get bars, tickers, and we'll do start equals none, end equals none. Perfect. Now we want to say if we pass in a start, let's use that start. Otherwise, let's use uh, a year ago. So we'll do, do start, <laughs> start equals start if start. So start if start exists and there's not none else. We'll DT date today which just passes it the current day of today 
and then dt time delta, where we're subtracting uh, 52 weeks, right? Essentially a year. And then we'll do the same thing for end, except end will just be for today. Else dt date today, so no time delta. Okay, so that's easy enough. And the query is pretty easy too. Uh, it's a little bit more complex than the prior one, but essentially we're going to query our tickers, right, our tickers uh, table, and join the minute bar table and, and confine it to our start dates and the tickers that we pass in, and then we'll order it at the end for good measure. We'll do session.query, pass it the symbol object, and then ticker. Right, because we just want the ticker for this. High, open, high, low, close. Now we'll join uh, the minute bar. And the way that this works is that in our model, we define relationships previously. So SQLchemy is smart enough to know what we're joining on, right? We're not explicitly saying, join the, you know, uh, the minute bar on the ticker ID that matches the symbol ID, right? When I say ticker ID, I mean ticker underscore ID. And then we'll do, we'll filter uh, between the dates and our ticker. So filter minute bar date between start and end. Not join, filter. and filter symbol, ticker, in tickers, right? If you pass it, we're passing in a list of tickers, then we'll order by the ticker and then the date. And then let's grab that statement as we did previously. And then we pass that to pandas. So the bars equals pd read SQL, pass it the statement we just created, the database, and we'll parse the dates because we want it to be the date format. Date. Or date type, I should say, and returns bars. Okay. Let's see if that worked. We'll do minute bars equals get bars. We'll pass it uh, the symbols, but we don't want to pass it all of the symbols. We'll grab the symbols, the ticker field, remember right here. And then we'll just grab the first five. Then we'll pass the to list. Right, so that'll give provide a list of tickers to our minute bar and let's print that out to see if this worked. And what did I do wrong? Week should be weeks. Okay. Weeks 52. Oh my goodness, Leo. Weeks equals insert. I hit the insert key by accident. Okay, and that'll print out our minute bars. See, I told you that would be a quick one. I think that's our shortest video in this series today, but that's okay because the next one is gonna be a little bit longer. So let's think about where we are. We now have a price database and uh, we can actually get data out of that price database. So now we need to fill our database with historical data. And that leaves me with a little bit of a dilemma because I need to kind of think about where you guys want to get data from. I think I'll start with some paid sources. We'll grab uh, polygon.io and then maybe Quandle. And then after that, we'll do some free sources like Yahoo Finance. But if there's a free or paid source that you're interested in learning how to query, let me know in the description below and we'll see what we can do. So with that being said, polygon.io uh, is the next video and I hope to see you there. Thanks and see you soon.